So hello guys. Um, so basically, uh, this is our project, the software side. Um, so just as you guys can see, uh, for uh, the last time any of these sources were actually updated, were on the 19th. Um, we were just waiting to see if we could get the VGA uh, uh, clock working, but for other reasons, we really couldn't just because of time-wise and whatnot. Um, but anyways, uh, uh, going into the hardware, uh, the first thing that we actually see or the input module uh, or the fireworks module used is our alarm clock module. This is where everything, this is where uh, the inputs are taken in and outputted uh, to the screen. Um, so the first thing you'll see is all our inputs, uh, the clock and the uh, Clock, the board's clock, uh, the keyboard inputs, uh, what's the time format, if you want the alarm on and off, uh, the seven side display, audio, um, and then the time of day, so like AM versus PM, and that's an LED. Um, so we basically just have our digit holder, which is just a way of being able to tell which digit we're actually displaying on the seven side display. Um, uh, I time is basically what's the input time. Uh, the in digit holder is basically the digit holders coming from our input module from the keyboard. Uh, time digit holder is the digits uh, from the uh, uh, clock module. Um, and basically we do this so that we can always be getting the uh, digits that we want uh, or the specific uh, digits uh, we want from each module. Um, and then we basically just go through in this bottom always block. Uh, and depending if we're inputting or not, uh, makes uh, affects if which digits we're actually showing for showing the input digit or the time digit. Um, so then we have our four modules, uh, the display module I won't be going over, this display seven second module I won't be going over because I've already gone over that in our previous labs. Um, the really important ones are the time input, the clock and the note plane. Uh, so to start off, I'm gonna start off with the time input. Um, so basically what happens is we're using our keyboard module from lab three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, where we basically just created a whole keyboard module that we can just reuse, uh, change a couple of specifications. So don't only look for sp specific inputs. Um, in this case, it's uh, A for alarm, uh, T for time, uh, for setting either one of those, and then your number zero to nine uh, for inputting uh, the time that you want. Um, and then we have our sentence creator, uh, which is basically just creating the sentence set for the time. Um, and basically what we do here is um, we're checking which number is actually being typed in um, and depending on that, it limits the actual user input. Um, so if it's the first digit, you only want one or two uh, because you're only going to have 12 or 24. Um, then your second digit in your hours uh, will be either zero to nine if it's 10 or zero to four if it's two. Um, so just allowing it to be much simpler to make sure that the user can't input an incorrect value. Um, and then for your minutes and seconds, that just goes zero to 60. Uh, so your uh, uh, your first digit in, or your tens digit in, minutes and seconds have a max of six and your ones digit in minutes and seconds can go from zero to nine. Um, so that's basically what we did in time input, our in sentence creator and everything. Um, and depending on if we press A or T, uh, we basically just say uh, what we're setting uh, with the set value. So if it's A, we're setting zero, which is our alarm. Uh, if it's B, then we're setting one. And then E is just for enter. So that's basically just finalizing everything, uh, setting our input time to sentence and all that. Um, and then this always block is just assigning the digits to the BCD values. Um, but yeah, uh, and then we have our actual clock, uh, which has an input of the actual time that's get coming from the time input. Um, uh, and we're outputting uh, if we're enabling and TOD and all that, which I already explained. Um, and basically what we do is when our BCD time, which is basically the uh, time being displayed on the screen, on the seven side display, and we're just calling it BCD because you need to represent it in BCD. Um, we're just setting that to 24 or uh, midnight. Um, and then we have an alarm and then we have our BCD in uh, and then we have BCD seconds, BCD minutes, and BCD hours. And basically what we're just doing there is uh, we put it into counters, uh, which I'll be explaining later on. Um, but basically what we're doing there is we're just uh, adding to it um, to make it easier uh, to actually be able to add uh, uh, just ones uh, to it. And we're actually using our ALU and our decoder and all that from the previous uh, project. And the way we actually did that, um, uh, was by using two actual decoders. So we're using basically a front-end decoder and a back-end decoder. We just connected it in such a way uh, where we didn't have to create an 8-bit number or an 8-bit uh, decoder. We just do it four bits at a time. And then once you reach maximum one more, you then do uh, what you need to on your second. That's basically what's happening there. Um, and then if we continue on with clock, uh, so if CPU reset, then we just reset the time. Um, 
and then on each uh, clock's STD, which is actually coming from our clock one hertz seconds, uh, which is basically really just a simple uh, a clock divider where we're dividing uh, our 100 megahertz down to actually be one hertz uh, so that we can get an actual true one second, um, which was something we were able to pull off was uh, actually being able to uh, have our time actually perfectly represent one second. Um, and then basically just moving forward, uh, we just keep on uh, adding and, and depending on if we reach above 60, then we just move to our, our uh, seconds to minutes and minutes to hours. And then once we get to maximum 24 hours, then we go to one. Um, and we always keep our actual uh, adding BCD time to uh, 24. Uh, so it's always actually working on a 24 clock. It, it just makes the logic so much easier. Uh, what happens when we flip on the 12 or 24 is when we're actually displaying the number, uh, we just subtract by 12 or we do the arithmetic that we need to do to actually uh, display it as what it's supposed to be. Um, and then with second error, this is basically what we're doing, like I said before. Uh, and then the last cool thing is when the alarm, when we have the alarm, uh, which is uh, enable or not, um, what happens is basically when time equals the alarm, uh, we enable the note playing. We, we play one note, uh, which is, if I'm not mistaken, is the A note. Um, and basically what we're just doing there is when the alarm plays for five seconds, um, we're basically just playing that note. Um, or if the user decides to set the alarm and not, uh, not play the actual alarm, uh, they can just turn off the enable and uh, everything else will work exactly the same way. It's just that it won't play the sound. Um, or even if the user wants to shut off the alarm before the five seconds, they can just press that and it shuts it off. Um, but yeah, that's basically our project or our, our lab. Uh, four. Um, as you can see, we did uh, as many of the extra credits as we could, the keyboard input, uh, the audio output for the alarm. Uh, but yeah, that's everything. So uh, next you'll be watching uh, the hardware implementation of everything. Thank you. So this is the hardware portion of lab four. So as you can see, here is the uh, uh, file name for or the file path for the project. It's the same thing as shown before. Um, so now we're just going to program the device. And as here we have, so when this is down, we're in 24 mode, uh, and we start at midnight, basically. Uh, so here we have, uh, when it's in 12 hour mode, it's 12, uh, 0, 0, uh, 16, 17 seconds. Uh, and as you can see, this light right here is on. Uh, yeah, as you can see, this light right here is on, uh, as showing as AM. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, switch the time to 7.35ish. Uh, I really don't know what's the seconds currently. So to do that, we come over here to the keyboard, we press T for time. Uh, and we have to input it as a 24 uh, number. So basically, since it's uh, 7 o'clock, that would be 19. Uh, so as you can see, I'm typing here. Uh, and then we're just going to go ahead, and now it's 36. So we're just going to type in 36 uh, with no seconds just for the sake of it. Um, and then uh, if we press Enter, as you can see, now it shows it as 736. Okay, if we were to switch over to 24 mode, it shows it as 1936. Uh, so if you want to set an alarm, uh, we just press A. Uh, again, it's in 24 input, we're the first two are hours, so 19. Uh, let's go ahead with 37. Uh, so it's going to ring in about uh, whatever is a couple minutes. Uh, so if we press enter, now you can see the seconds didn't stop, it's still running. Um, and then if we want to enable the alarm, we just press that on. Um, so in about 20 seconds, we'll be hearing uh, audio tune come out of the uh, speaker here, which is the headphones, uh, which is connected to the uh, mod to the FPGA. Um, so in about five, four, three, two, one, you'll hear it. And if you just want to turn it off, you basically push it down. Uh, otherwise it'll play for about five seconds. Um, and if you want to set the alarm and not play anything, it's basically the same thing. You just keep this module down. Um, but yeah, that's basically how we did lab four. We have a keyboard input. Uh, we're showing our AM PM with this light here. Um, you can turn on and off your, or you can turn on and off your alarm using uh, this switch, or you can switch between 12 hour, 24 hour uh, viewing here, and then we're outputting sound for our alarm uh, there. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, thank you for watching this. Uh, hope you have a good day. Thank you.